Everybody, it's Tyler here at Champions. Just checking in. Team number 1987, Bronco Bots. We have an absolutely phenomenal season. Two regional wins and absolutely dominant at their events as well, too. Take a look at Bronco Bots, what they have here to offer. Uh, I love the compactness of the arm that they bring here. Uh, great intake we were talking about, the elbow beer in the arm, some of the gearbox they've done, and some really cool programming you're going to be featuring on Bronco Bots as well. Bronco Bots has really been one of those teams that I think has flown under the radar for a long time. They've had great success, and they need that recognition that they really do deserve. So we hope you'll take a look more about Bronco Bots and what do they have to offer coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Here, let's talk about the uh, claw that you have on here as we start to go through that scoring journey and process. Talk to me about, of course, what you have, but like, how did this all package in correctly for your team and for Bronco Bots as you're uh, competing here at Charged Up? Right, okay, so we have a bag motor on the wrist right over here, and that bag motor has an absolute encoder that allows the claw to know exactly where it is at all points in time. Our claw was heavily inspired by Wild Sting. However, we were able to add another roller and package it a little bit tighter, which has helped us to uh, pick up cones and cubes a little bit easier. And we also make sure that after every single match, we gotta check that encoder and make sure it's right. And we spend a lot of time changing the different um, style of the claw to make sure it was absolutely perfect for a robot and for uh, cone and cube collection. When did those changes take place? Was it during season or just during like build seasons you went in? It was definitely during, uh, it was during the regular season because we actually added this in the first week of competition. Okay. Right. So very cool. And when you were looking at it, I, I know you said inspired by, by Waltzing on it, but I love teams that take it and make it their own, right? I right. think that's a really cool thing for that. Uh, was there anything else that, that was like big changes you made either from when you first started to where you are now or anything like that? Yeah, actually at this regional or at, at Worlds, we cut these um, wheels, compliant wheels, because we were noticing that they were giving too much compression to the cones when they went in there. So doesn't look the most professional, but it works incredibly. <laughs> uh, who cares, to be honest with you, as long as it's working, that's what matters right? for it as well. So really appreciate you telling us more about that. Let's continue yeah. on your uh, your arm as well too. Grayson's gonna take that a bit more and talk about uh, the gearbox that you have and of course the uh, telescope as well. So talk to me more about what's happening and we'll see a little bit of demo how the uh, arm and collector all works together. So from the beginning of the season, we recognized that we were definitely gonna have to extend relatively far in order to score the cubes and cones in all places around the uh, grid. So our uh, arm extends 42 inches out from base from this layer right here and it goes all the way out to reach well above the high. Um, the configuration is cascading. We have one continuous loop of belt running from here all the way down to the bottom and then back up on the, this side and then we have the same thing on the opposing side. It's pinned on the fourth stage and the third stage as well as the second stage and so they all deploy linearly at a one-to-one -one ratio. Moving on to how we rotated, uh, we were using um, a gear calculator to determine how fast our robot could uh, rotate uh, the arm, and we determined that it would be completely like safe and super efficient if we could get it half a second from side to side. So we did calculations, and our uh, reduction uh, involves a 8 tooth pinion to a uh, 62 tooth gear to a 20 tooth gear to an 80 tooth gear, and then finally to a 12 tooth to a 54 uh, sprocket and for a total of 124 to one. And so like if you notice, we rotate extremely fast from side to side. I think we got to demo some of this too. We talked about yeah. a lot of the cool stuff. Right? So let's demo and talk to me a little about uh, what's happening, anything else you want to include with the arm as well too. Uh, the last thing that I think uh, is really important to us that we added between uh, uh, regional uh, two and champs is that we had issues of this belt slipping right here on the claw. You can see it right there. Um, and it, because we're using an absolute encoder stage in the two by two uh, to determine the angle of the wrist, uh, if this belt gets messed up, all of our positions are messed up. So what we did is we added a limit switch right here and there's an auto homing sequence that comes down here and hits this bumper against this limit switch oh, nice, yeah. and resets our offsetting points. 
So that's the other big feature for me for the arm. And as the robot's gone, talk about kind of the different positions we see the robot going into. So uh, we have a couple different positions. Uh, based on what our uh, driver sets to the uh, PCs getting ready to select, it will adjust the heights for collection. So all of our collections are off this side. We have one that uh, is for the single substation, and then one uh, for the ground pickup of the cone. <clears throat> so this one collects from the single substation just like that, and it really gets a good purchase on the cone. Like, there's no way it's dropping that. Uh, yeah, definitely not. And then not. from there, because it knows what we collected, it extends to the correct height for the high. So uh, other than that, we have the medium and high cube as well. So. Awesome. I love, love seeing that the process as it goes through it. Obviously, very well thought out. But in order to accomplish that, there's a lot of code that goes into it, Cooper. So talk to me about some of the programming features of this and uh, what are a couple of big highlights for Bronco Boss you want to talk about from a programming standpoint? Yeah, so absolutely. One of this arms is one of our greatest uh, programming achievements. So far, what this arm does is it was incredibly difficult to program. Uh, what this arm does is it uses an interpolated data table in order to get the correct values for uh, extending and holding rotation. In order to do that, because we've got an encoder uh, on our Falcon motor down here on the bottom, as well as we've got an, an encoder on the rotation right here. Uh, and as long as we have all those, we can go to the correct positions. But in order to get those, in order to fight gravity, especially for all of them, uh, this is the most important thing is that we use an interpolated data table. So what we did is essentially we took uh, several PID values uh, which would uh, stall out the motors. We did that all across on different rotations and got those points set, so that way we didn't have to set them all the way across. And then using a feed forward value, which acts as a throttle, yeah. we then use that in order to fight gravity, not only extending upwards, but also holding rotation at an extension all across the rotation of the arm. One last thing I want to ask you is uh, from Autonomous Mills there, uh, how, have you done any improvements for World Championships for Autonomous in particular? Absolutely. Something that we've really been hard working at is getting our limelights to work properly. Uh, what we do is we have four limelights on each corner of our robot here, uh, and what we use for those is we run a pose estimator that takes uh, the, the position of all of these limelights based off an April tag, uh, all three April tags on each side of the field. And using that, we're able to calibrate where it is in coordination with our pigeon gyro, which we have deep inside our robot. And overall, that's been a super big help in making sure we're staying on point. Well, BroncoBot's a phenomenal machine this year, and actually for the last few years as well, too. I've really had my eye on you all, so I wish you best of luck here at World Championship, but cannot believe the legacy you're starting to build. Congratulations, and can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great job, everybody. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.